Hello guys and welcome to episode 20 of my Total War Warhammer 2 playthrough playing as Tomb Kings on very hard difficulty and today what we're going to be doing is moving on after securing the second book of Nagash we are going to be moving towards the Black Pyramid we're also going to be finishing off Tor Elasaur so uh, plenty of stuff to do let's get uh, Setra and King Thutep ready to uh, annihilate uh, to what I saw. So this should be a relatively simple. Um, it says that the battle is actually going to be hard, but we have a lot of forces. Uh, they have a lot too, but uh, they're all northern sea guards. So uh, if we get them engaged in melee, we can just use our own archers to annihilate them, and uh, things will be relatively easy. This is a battle on open ground outside their settlement, I believe. So we're going to have to make sure we run them down afterwards. Um, they do have a quite nice defensive position, but we do have a casket of souls coming in, so I'm hoping that we can force them to attack us, uh, which should be a lot better. Uh, let's quick save it and fight it on the battle map. So I believe this is uh, one of my most hated battle maps in the entirety of Warhammer. Um, it is a horrible one to defend and also attack on due to all of the trees. I guess it kind of works in our favour against the archers, but um, our own archers aren't going to be as effective, which is annoying. we got a long way uphill to go. Uh, reinforcements are actually coming in behind us though, so hmm, this is interesting. Our reinforcements are coming in up here, which we'll be able to crush them up on the top. And uh, like our army is in... okay, that's in really good position to like just tackle their army so um, let's just uh, get the Kepler guard and so on up here uh, we'll go for the uh, Nehekara warriors down below um, we are going to be like attacking them uphill quite a lot but um, I think that's fine um, like we'll be uh, basically attacking them as soon as they come in off the spawn um, so that's fine we do have the Cambrian war sphinx there we also have our cavalry this is going to be like a full army coming in here. I think also the garrison army maybe. Um, so it could be a pretty difficult fight for Setra, but I think we can just massacre them as they come in. Let's um, gamble for more wins. We're only on 13. And we will start the deployment, start the battle. Off we go. Right. So we need to make sure we get up in their face. So let's just run up as far as we can. Make sure that these guys are coming down from above. And uh, my archers should just be in range to fire away straight away. If they're not, I need to move them forwards a little bit. And uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much ready to go. I will have the Cameron War Sphinx move up here straight away as well. Okay, that's all their units coming in. Let's just charge. Okay, we need to just make sure these guys are stopping and starting to fire because we are definitely in range uh, let's get Setra to uh, just uh, run down into them as well start the engagement with Erisian's uh, Legion of the Netherworld oh, this uphill battle is going to be insane <laughs> Not uh, the most ideal for us at all, but uh, I don't know, it's fine. Uh, let's uh, make sure my horsemen get involved, bring them around the top side. We can get a nice downward charge over here. It's time to just line up our forces and uh, charge them as well. Let's just go like so, grab all the skeleton arches. We just move them. There we go. That makes things a bit easier. Okay, how is Setra doing? I think we go for the massive Sakbeth's incantation here. This has the potential to do an absolute butt ton of damage. Those modern sea guard. Oh, it's also coming down through the white lines of trace. 
Oh my. Oh my, it's ruining my guys as well. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Um, <laughs> time to come down into the back of that engagement. Uh, we've got the Nehekar warriors here, we've got the horsemen. This is going to be an insane charge. So those Nehagar warriors did so much damage, but um, that's fine. Up here, it's uh, time for our horsemen and so on to get engaged. Wow, the Cask of Souls got engaged upon. Uh, let's have my archers just kill the Great Eagle then, and uh, we will start slamming into them. We'll just make sure that all of these guys are in a group. We're going to control group and just charge. Um, we will get uh, our Lich Priest to tackle the Great Eagle. And we'll get the king to ride through and hit some Northern Sea Guard. I'm right, gonna get the chariots to ride up the hill here and hit those Northern Sea Guard. Okay. Time to attack their archers with our archers. The idea being I wanted to put the Spirit Leech onto the uh, onto the Eagle. Where's it gone? There it is. Okay, uh, let's jump back to uh, etc. Uh, because our cavalry is going to be charging in here. Oh, they've already arrived. Okay, that's fine. So that's going to demolish this uh, reinforcing army quite a bit. Um, these Nehekara warriors probably just need to back off, really. I will try and take out their Eagles if we can. Or even this princess is probably a good idea. Uh, then we're going to have uh, Sephra actually come back and engage this wizard, I think. Oh, that eagle is so dead right now. Right, let's target the other eagle. We'll zoom back over to the other side. <laughs> where it looks like we've managed to break through their Swordmasters relatively easily. That's quite nice to see. Um, let's now charge into their back line. I'm not sure where these guys are going. But uh, what I'm going to do is try and spray down those Swordmasters. Continue the engagement with the Northern Sea Guard here. I'm going to get the uh, Chariots to charge those Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers. Across the board, we're doing a pretty damn good job, I think. King of kings. Gonna make sure I charge down this Lawmaster. And we'll come over to the Great Eagle as well. Break them. Okay, I'm not sure what uh, Setra's doing. He can, seems to be kind of stuck. <laughs> he looks stuck. Let's just uh, do that. Uh, continue maybe <laughs> I don't know <laughs> right, we've broken that army uh, the Ashabti have arrived so let's uh, see about this reinforcing army here those are just spearmen we have our lich priest kind of suffering actually against the prince let's use that and uh, try and save him if we can. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> there goes our Lich Priest. Our Lich Priest has actually been really, really awful uh, throughout uh, the, this game. Um, like, in the campaign and on the battle map, it's just been absolutely useless. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, do we have cavalry here? They are all up the top there. Hmm. I guess killing off the nobles is, is probably a good idea, but I think Setra's just stuck at the moment. So he's not going to be able to do anything. I guess Kerrion War Sphinx might be able to take out like one of the princesses, maybe. Um, we're not going to catch up to those chariots. We might be able to kill the Lothan Sea Guard, though. What, what sort of stuff we got left over here? Um, let's just have these chariots run down these guys.
<laughs> Look at Setra just running that guy over. Nuts. Just spawn some like a shafty in the face of these guys. Not sure how much damage they're actually doing, but yeah, we'll get there. Get rid of that noble at least. Uh, looks like uh, they're just still having fun with his play toy over here. Can we uh, use that on this guy? We can. Okay, there we go. Is he dead? I think he's dead. Alright, we'll end the battle there. Decisive victory. It was important to run down as many as I could since that was an out of settlement battle. Um, I'm not sure if we lost any units in the reinforcing army. I feel like we did lose at least one, maybe some spearmen or something. It was hard to tell. Like when there's so many units on the bottom there, it's really hard to tell like what you lose and what you don't. And we lost uh, our Lich Priest and we lost the Skeleton Horse. Get ourselves some kind of jars. Uh, that's going to make their army uh, run away. And um, what we'll do is grab uh, Setra, I guess, and uh, take the Tower of the Sun. I am very tempted to just sort of resolve this, even if it does just kill off half my troops. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so Skeleton Arch is dying now, that's, that's good. Um, well, not good, but uh, it's fine. Um, Province secured, and um, that's the last of the. Tour and all, guys. Shop these chaps. Smoke no jars. And Toradosaur is destroyed. Okay. Uh, let's re recruit ourselves a, another Lich Priest. Uh, and hopefully, this guy will be a bit better than the last one. Let's have a look at the actions. Ooh, look at that. Melee attack for Tomb Scorpions and defense. Okay. Interesting. It's a Light Priest. I think I'm actually going to recruit him. We'll get the guy who buffs Tomb Scorpions. I'm going to actually just recruit him at Kemri. Because uh, it's going to be uh, not long until we have a new leader. And I'm going to recruit Tomb Scorpions into his army. We'll also give him the Herald that buffs Tomb Scorpions. So this guy seems uh, pretty nice. So at Cobra Pass, uh, we now have a commandment available. Uh, again, we'll go for Worship of Fath. So that's uh, minus 20% construction cost for all buildings. Actually, that's better than I thought it would be. I thought it would just be uh, minus 15%. That's due to the uh, commandments being 50% more effective. Surely it would need to be 100% more effective to change it from 10% to 20%. I guess I'm not going to be complaining. Uh, Worship of Jaff now gives 30% casualty replenishment rate. That is pretty nuts. Um, this is very nice now. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, change the Land of Assassins from Casualty Replenishment Rate to Worship of Fath. Um, we're going to basically have that Worship of Fath everywhere. Let me just check my promise provinces, actually. Uh, we do have 11,000. I did want to build the Great Pyramid here. I've already got the Worship of Fath. Do we have to, like, change that back in order to get the double? Yeah, I feel like we have to, like, turn it off and then turn it back on again. I guess I may as well change them all to, like, Worship of Tra for now, rather than to nothing. But this one's fine, because it will still get the 20%. Uh, that one needs to be changed. To probably Worship of Fach. Uh, this one can be changed as well. We don't need Worship of Jaff there anymore, that's for sure. Might even go as far as to get the Worship of Asfa here. I think that's a, probably a good idea. Um, changing it there already. The Land of the Dead already changing it at the shifting mangrove coastline. Uh, we're going to go for the public order change. 
Southern Badlands is already the public order change. We need to change that back to the um, Worship of Fact. Then we need to go to the Southlands, World's Edge Mountains, where again we're going to go to the Worship of Fath. It's good that we're actually doing this because I don't, I don't think I have before. Yeah, I haven't really paid much attention to my commandments. Uh, these could have definitely all been changed <laughs> a lot sooner. Let's get Kuizotl, the Tower of Bone, I think. And then we're going to save for this turn in order to afford the Great Pyramid of Cetra in the next turn. That should be just enough. Anyway, Last Herald is complete. Because we have enough Kenobi Jars to do that, that's going to get uh, Herald of the Sphinx complete. Really looking forward to having a new general. I might even go as far as to recruit King Sunifret back and um, give him all of the Tomb Scorpion bonuses. Cetra the Imperishable will go for Power Drain now. And we have the Commandment available. Settlement upgrade available, we can dodge those, don't need to worry about that. Wow, look how many there are now. That's crazy. Right, so with King Thutep and Cetra, what we're going to do is uh, head towards the battle down here for another Book of Nagash. Now that we've destroyed Tor Elasaur. That's going to be their job. So I'm probably going to have to kit out their armies. In which case, let's just uh, do that now. Uh, Cetra lost quite a few units, didn't he? So... Let me just uh, work out what I want in this army. Because we can recruit some pretty awesome stuff now. But we want to leave the Ashabti for our Ashabti army. Tomb Scorpions can wait for our Tomb Scorpion army. Cetra is going to be focusing on the Tomb Guard. Because then we can just like get his skills upgraded here. Obey me! Talk to you, Cetra. What we're going to do is we're going to trade out the Nehekara Warriors. The realm of souls fills with my foes. So King Thutep has all of the really high rank ones. Then we can just get rid of these guys. Ban them. And uh, recruit ourselves a bunch of Tomb Guard. So, four normal Tomb Guard. And uh, we'll go for Tomb Guard with Halberd in the next turn. So a couple turns it's going to take to recruit all that good stuff. Um, but uh, I think that's a good shout. And then what we're going to do is uh, get rid of the Skeleton Horsemen. We're going to keep the Nehekara Horsemen. They've done us a lot of favours throughout so far. And we're going to replace those with uh, Skeleton Chariots. So three lots of skeleton chariots, and then we'll have tomb guards, and then we have the archers. Uh, we've got plenty of tomb guard. What I'm then going to do is uh, get the herald of Jaff. We'll give that to someone else. And what I'm going to do instead there is get the herald of Marak, and um, we'll also get the herald for the chariots as well. Uh, Herald of Kemri, I'm I'm very tempted to give that to the Ashabti army for the Ashabti with great bow, but we have a lot of skeletons. Oh, we've already got the Herald of Zandri in his army, so that's good. Okay, um, let's have a look at the enchanted items. Iron Curse icons probably not the best. Maybe potions from extra strength would be better. 
But from now on, we'll get the uh, Trial the Great Father for the extra leadership for Chariots and uh, Tomb Guard. We'll get the melee defense for Chariots and Tomb Guard. I might even go down Par Parasage of the Soul Realm to get Master Charioteers. And uh, we'll also get uh, the extra armor and melee defense for Tomb Guards. Um, so, yeah, that, I think that's a, a good idea. And then we can go towards uh, Unfading Memory. And also Dune Rider. Okay. So Setra should have a pretty decent army. King Thutep's army is sorted-ish. <laughs> um, I guess I could like change out these skeleton horsemen for something better. Like, he can't do any global recruitment though, so there's no point in doing that this turn. Uh, for him, he's just going to continue with hard to hit, and we'll go for, towards Tomb Strike. Uh, Tomb Strike is actually pretty damn cool. Pretty awesome ability. But uh, we don't need to worry about our dynasty, that's going to be complete next turn. I don't think there's anything in our trade that I need to care about, so we'll leave that. Uh, we don't need to work on the Mortuary Cult. Uh, our guy here. Necrotech can move towards Bel Alayed and um, that's all of our troops moved. So I think we're good. I might just put this to the worship of Jaff this turn and I should probably go for some more local recruitment into this army but um, he's going to require Tomb Guard isn't he to fill that up so I think that's probably a bad idea. These two are going to head back to our main province anyway to re-recruit a bunch of troops. Uh, meanwhile, I'm very tempted to get the Skull Repository. We have a maxed out Mortiferous Sanctuary here. That's pretty nuts. I'm not sure if we need that at all. <laughs> not in the main settlement. I normally have the obelisks in the secondary settlements because then we can fit more capacity in the main settlements um, but uh, yeah we'll, we'll leave it at that because I want to save the cash for the pyramid etc let's send the turn so order of law masters declared on the court of Libaris I'm not too worried about that continent at the moment As long as the Court of Libaris doesn't get in the way of us uh, securing a book, I don't mind. Oh, Kalidor has declared war on us. Okay. And if I go to the dynasties, why is that still locked? Oh, no way. You're not telling me that I need to finish all of the wisdoms of the 6th Dynasty, 4th Dynasty and so on to unlock the Heralds Empowered. I thought unlocking all of the Heralds like this unlocked that. Oh, that's such a shame. I wasn't quite sure how that worked. God damn. Okay, never mind. Um, Setra has leveled up. Uh, let's get Tra the Great Father going. And uh, that's going to give extra leadership and melee defense to the units in his army, which is great. These guys now have 50 melee defense. Um, the melee defense of the chariots is also going to be pretty damn high once we're done with this recruitment. Utep, I'm not sure why he isn't replenishing at the moment. That's kind of odd. Uh, either way, um, we need to change back all of our commandments. So let's get that done. So minus 20%, minus 20%. <laughs> the other good thing about this is it will increase our tax a lot. So I don't want to build anything until this is ready to go. Uh, what's that? Minus 20% again. So you add the Kingdom of Beasts. We might want to keep that. 
Never mind, it should be fine. Um, Land of Assassins is already minus 20%. And the Worship of Tra, we can go minus 20% again. Um, shifting Mangrove Coastline. We might want to keep the Worship of Asaf for now. Yeah. At uh, the Southern Badlands, we're now working on, working on the Worship of Fath, which is good. Southland's World's Edge Mountains, we've already changed to it. Same with the Sea of Dread and the Western Jungle. Okay, so that's all of them. We have 15,000. We can actually build the Pyramid of Setra now, but we don't get the discount. So I'm going to wait until we do get the discount, which means we can spend our cash on something else in the meantime, which will most likely be at uh, Vulture Mountain, because here uh, we can build the Statuary of Kemri and... Um, I'm also tempted to build the skeletal garrison. Um, in the meantime, uh, let's get uh, King Rakash and uh, also our other army here, uh, King Wakaf, to zoom towards home. And we can have our Tra, um, our Tra's Necrotect, take this ruin. And what that's going to do is um, give us some replenishment this turn as well, which is nice. And we can also build into this settlement, which is a gold mine. Oh, nice. Didn't realize that was actually the case. But uh, we shall go for the Obelisk, and I might as well just go for a defensive building, I think. Get the desert look out. So next time we should have more than enough still to build that pyramid of Setra. Let's look at the settlement upgrades. Uh, no, we don't want to look at the settlement upgrades. We can ignore those. Here are not moved. That's fine. We can keep him where he is. No rush. Uh, it's kind of annoying though because it's going to be like seven turns now until we get a new army which might delay me taking the black pyramid but if the armies are really strong then it might not matter and now we're just sort of saving canopic jars we can definitely get ourselves some decent armor and weapons which will be really good all right we just need to make sure we skip all those notifications uh, King Rakash did level up, so make sure we do that. We need to choose uh, what he's going to be dedicated to. Uh, it was going to be Tomb Guard, wasn't it? So I think we'll go for Try the Great Father with King Rakash as well, because he's going to be another uh, another leader that sort of relies on Tomb Guard after sort of upgrading Sun Scorched Bones. I really can't wait to uh, get a Wakaf, uh, the skill for Geheb, because that's going to be so damn cool, like upgrading these with Shabti an absolute butt ton. Uh, but yeah, let's see, let's, let me just check. How many archers do we have in this army? Quite a few actually, we have six archer units, because it might be worth going for Asaf and then adding... Uh, this arm, this dude into that army and maybe getting scorpions instead. I think we, yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea actually. Because it's got some scorch bones is always nice. Um, but I think we're going to go for Asaf. We'll get uh, our our Randy's uh, Lich Priest in there. We'll build scorpions into this guy. So Let's give him the bonus for Tomb Scorpions versus Infantry. Okay, and uh, King Wakaf here, he does already have the Herald of Restra. Don't need Herald of the Sphinx for him. I think I might give Herald of the Sphinx for now uh, to the Cambrian War Sphinx or, or two Cetra. So that, because he has the Cambrian War Sphinx. Right, Thutep may as well just go and discover some of these treasures for us while we're waiting. 
Army performed better in the campaign, please. Favorable wins. Okay, that's all right. Uh, let's maybe duck down and get these guys over here. This uh, shipwreck will then move up to uh, this one and pick that up on the way back round towards this rogue army, which we're going to destroy in order to get the next Book of Nagash. Awesome. Uh, let's move on to the next turn. The trade agreement dissolved between ourselves and Safari. I'm surprised we haven't seen an army from the Pirates of Sartosia. yet. I kind of expected them to come down with an army after they declared on us, but um, we're just going to speed things up for now. If they do start coming down, then I guess it's going to kind of suck if they kind of take some of our settlements, because I haven't got walls everywhere yet, because I've been delaying building walls for quite a while. Something that you should never really do in Warhammer. <laughs> walls seem very important indeed. Let's have a look at where the Pirates of Sartos actually are and if they're moving armies into range of our settlements. They are, they're coming towards uh, Phyrus. Hmm. Do you know they're heading back? Okay, we don't have to worry about that anymore then. Good. The Tor Elethys refugees, where are they? They've uh, united against us. I think we should dig and pray for the extra income from trade. And that's these chaps. Okay. Kind of random, I guess. Uh, who did they get invited by? Spine of Sotek Dwarves. Very random, indeed. Uh, we'll go towards full speed. Let's go get this wreck. Or this sunken treasure ship. Got extra experience. Let's now move back up here. He's leveled up again. Let's get Tomb Strike. And unfortunately, guys, that has been my time. I am going to have to leave it here in the well, in this uh, turn. What we'll do in the next episode is move on with Setra. We'll have our armies continue back towards Kemri, uh, where we're going to make King Rakash's army now into an army based on Tomb Scorpions, which will be very, very cool indeed, and I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, but that's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.